Let's make some rondos. So rondos are a Dutch almond paste tart. And um, there's a lot of different variations of rondos. You can do just a simple one, which I'll show you how to do in a minute, which is covered with dough and has dough underneath as well. There's also one which is um, topped with fruit, like apples or apricots. And then you've got something that's very similar, which is called a slof, uh, which is often covered in a pastry cream and um, fresh fruits. So I'm gonna, it's all the same base, it's the same dough, it's the same almond paste filling. So I'll show you how to form those bases so you can make any of those um, three different varieties of rondo. So we're gonna be using a jumbo muffin pan. So this is a regular cupcake pan or muffin pan, and this is a jumbo one. You see they're different in size. And um, these are really useful to bake these kinds of pastries. It makes them just a little bit more substantial. You can also use a mini cupcake pan, or sorry, a mini cheesecake pan, a three inch cheesecake pan. These are easier to find though. So it's really up to you what you prefer. The, perf the uh, advantage of a cheesecake pan is it has a nice straight side, so it'll make it look a little bit more authentic. But this will work just fine. All right, so to make a rondo, a rondo has a base layer of dough and a top layer of dough. So I've divided my dough into 35 gram pieces. I've got three of these and then I'll do three of the other variety. So you'll notice it's a very sticky dough. What I like to do is roll it up. If your dough is still chilled, you can roll it out into a disc using your rolling pin. You probably have to flour your work surface a little bit. We want to make a disc that's about the same size as the bottom of one of the cavities in your um, jumbo muffin pan. I honestly I find it easier just to tap it out with my fingers, but you can use a rolling pin. All right, and I'm just going to place it on the bottom of my muffin pan. You don't really have for a covered roller, it doesn't really have to rise up against the sides. Then we've got um, our almond paste. So again, I've divided it in two different amounts. Um, for the covered little dough, you want about twice as much almond paste because it's going to be your only filling. If you're going to do it with fruit on top, then we use a little bit less almond paste. So let's use this one here. This is 30 grams of almond paste. Super sticky. Just pop it on top of your dough. And it helps to have wet fingers here. And what you want to do is spread the almond paste out into a little disc and leave a little bit of the dough bare on the sides because that's where your top, your little lid, and the bottom are going to grow into each other. So let's see a little mound there. What I'm going to do is put a little indentation in it because I'm going to put a amaretta cherry inside. So I like to put it in. Let's get one out here. Just put it right in that little indentation there. There we go. So take another one of these smaller pieces of dough, roll it out the same way as you did before. Make sure you have a little bit of flour on your work surface so it doesn't stick too badly and use your trusty dough scraper to take it off, lift it off. So this one is going to have to be a little bit bigger than the previous one you did um, just because the um, muffin pans are tapered. So you want it to kind of fit over the top of the previous layer. It fits perfectly. And you don't really have to press it down. The two pieces of dough will kind of grow into each other as it rises, but you can just kind of dab it in there. Then I like to garnish it with some almonds. So traditionally it's either one or three almonds on top of a little dough. These are pretty big, so we'll do three. Let's take three blanched almonds. That's what they look like. So I'll do that again three more times, and then we're gonna brush them with egg wash. So we've made three traditional little doughs to cover little doughs. Now the other option is to do an open-faced one. Um, there's two reasons you would do that. One would be to make a fruit top little dough. So like a, um, an apple rondo or an apricot rondo. Um, basically you have dough on the bottom with the almond paste under, uh, underneath and then you would um, fill the little cup with some fruit and top with some streusel if you wanted to. So to do that you use the whole batch of dough so not um, split into two halves like we did just now to make a base on the top. But rather you have just one and so it's turning into a bigger disc. And what I'm going to do is lay that in the bottom of my cup here and I'm going to press the air out to make sure it's touching all the sides and I'm kind of going to build it up a little bit on the side. We really want to create a kind of cup for your fruit to sit in. So going up the sides of the mini muffin or the jumbo muffin pan about two thirds, three quarters of the way, something like that, and make sure that there's no air caught underneath. And then what we would do is take our almond paste, 
And then before you would bake it, you would put your fruit on top, your apples or your apricot, and you put your streusel on top. So a third version is the slough, and the slough basically is the same thing as we all know, um, but rather than baking the filling, the fruit filling, with the base, you bake the base separately from the fruit filling. Um, usually a, a slough has like a pastry cream or a whipped cream piped on top of the baked base, and then it's topped with a fresh fruit like strawberries or any kind of berries that you like, or any kind of fruit really. So the recipe in the book is with strawberries. So same thing, same procedure. You make a disc that's a little bit larger than the base of your um, muffin pan. We're gonna press it in, but now rather than making it rise up the sides, we're just gonna let the dough cover a little bit higher than um, just the base. Again, you wanna try and make sure there's no air bubbles in there. And then we'll put a little bit of almond paste in the bottom. There we go. So we're not trying to hold a filling like this, we're just putting it in like this. And I've got one more that I can do, and then I'll, what I'll do is egg wash them. So I'll show you that. I have my egg wash here, which is an egg that's been loosened with a fork. And I'll use my pastry brush to brush all over the exposed dough. So for these um, traditional little noughs, you wanna go all over the nuts and over the dough. If you want a really shiny surface, you can egg wash it once, then put the nuts in, and then egg wash it again after the egg wash has had a little bit of time to dry. And for the open face little nose, you can try and brush the edges a little bit. So the ones that have apple or apricot on and then streusel on top, there really isn't a lot of point in trying to egg wash it. You won't see the edges anymore um, by the time your fruit filling is on because it will fill the cup. But this one here, the slough, you could just take your brush and just brush the top edge there. There we go. And then you can put it in the oven and bake it. That's it.